when I think about a strike, truth be told, I tend to default to what I think is a pretty narrow, or you might even say conservative definition, where I say, you know, a strike is a work stoppage at the point of production. But I think, you know, perhaps in tandem with some of these worker centers and alt labor groups that have been uh, making some noise over the last couple of decades, I think we've also seen the definition of a strike sort of expand and contract at times. And what I'm talking about is a few years ago, you know, um, uh, socialist feminists organized a women's strike. Uh, and that was, you know, kind of a rally and a demonstration for one day uh, to kind of call attention to the unwaged work that women do, um, you know, both in their jobs and in the home and so forth. Um, I know that at the height of the Black Lives Matter protests uh, over this past year, uh, there were other, you know, worker advocacy groups or, you know, uh, activist groups that called for a kind of day of action, uh, uh, you know, one day strike in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and also, again, to call attention to sort of police brutality and also the, you know, the contributions that Black workers make, uh, quite honestly. So I, I guess the question, but, you know, sometimes I think about, you know, these, these uh, kinds of moments and I'm like, well, like, is this really a strike? Like, should we should we count this as a strike? My question to you guys is, what is a strike? First of all, of course, as I already asked. Two, does does it matter? Does it matter what we call a strike? Is it a good thing to expand the definition of a strike to include kind of these other sort of non traditional labor actions as well? I'll I'll take my crack at it. Um, I guess labor, labor Paul, Paul? Should, should know <laughs> what a strike is. Um, I guess how I would define it is, you know, when the majority, if not all workers at a given workplace or company refuse to work in pursuit of specific demands. So to me, that means a publicity event is not a strike. A social media call to action isn't a strike or a refusal to use social media isn't a strike. And it's not a strike if only a few workers participate or a few workers don't show up to work. So, you know, of course, the point of a strike is to hit a company where it hurts the most by preventing their ability to make profits. And so in the case of the public sector, like teaching or sanitation, a strike might not be about profits per se, but about disrupting the functioning of society enough to demonstrate how important those workers are to society. So really, it's the ultimate tool of leverage workers have. And though, of course, like we saw with PACO, strikes are not guaranteed to be successful. Uh, and one thing we should talk about actually is the real purpose of picket lines. Um, picket lines are not just so workers can march around with signs. Um, the aim of them, at least originally, was to physically prevent the company from bringing in the replacement workers, or at least make it as difficult as possible. Today, I think picket lines are often kind of just symbolic affairs that don't really affect the ability of the employer to bring in replacements. Part of this, I think, is because of uh, very repressive labor law. But picket lines used to be very confrontational and could actually prevent a company from using workers. And I think a great example is we have a video clip from a steel strike in 1937. When a Mickens strike, it hurts. And here is the Battle of Monroe, Michigan, a clash between strikers and the special deputies. 500 men wanted to go back to work for the Bethlehem Steel Company, but they had to run the gauntlet of pickets and the pickets were heavy handed. Look out there, someone's being killed. Oh, it's only a cameraman. Baseball bats, knotted rubber and iron pipes were all brought in to play their part in persuading blacklegs that a strike is serious. Barricades were put up at a hundred cars filled with men who wanted to work made a dash through the picket lines. That's a strike in America. So to be clear, I'm not saying that I hope more strikes turn violent like that, but we shouldn't forget what the actual point of a strike is. Um, and it's different to me than a rally or a mass demonstration. Um, but Max, also curious your thoughts. 
And I'm just uh, thinking about that that shade thrown at the cameraman. I know. I just didn't realize that when I first saw it. But you got to love that old-timey voice. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, don't mind him. He's just a penny camera boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's it's. I'm thinking a lot about uh, something that uh, Robert Pauly, the then president, newly elected president of PATCO, said uh, right before the kind of faded PATCO strike in 1981 that we discussed uh, earlier in this episode. As we know, it was unsuccessful. Reagan broke it, fired over 11,000 workers, banned them from working in the federal government ever again, and it was a massive blow to the labor movement. But Pauly said something, um, you know, to the members that, that really sticks with me, right? It would kind of live in infamy after we know what happened with the strike. But what he said is the only illegal strike is an unsuccessful one, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I think that, you know, there, there is a truth to that, right? I mean, there is a truth to that that goes back to what um, both of y'all were saying, right? It's... um. It does matter to have these definitions, I think, right? Especially um, when we see from things like Petco um, the dire consequences that can be had um, when we don't have the power uh, and when we don't approach these things as strategically as we need to, right? When we lose, right? When we lose, we lose hard and we lose a lot. Right. That's exactly what happened with the Patco strikers. Right. And so I think that it is important to kind of insist on definitions that we can actually work with and think with and plan around. Otherwise, you know, we get kind of a lot of this silliness of people calling a general strike every two seconds without <laughs> knowing how the hell they're actually going to do it, without thinking about the danger that they're going to be putting themselves and their coworkers in if they don't actually plan uh, to execute it with that kind of power that they're going to need to. But I, I think that there's a long way of saying that I more or less agree with you both that, you know, it, it, it is a specific kind of action that requires um, a collective ability to exert power on production, right? To, mm -hmm. to, and to take away, right? To exert that power by taking away something that the owning class needs in order to produce and in order to gain the profit that it lives by, right? And so I think then maybe the question I would pose to folks watching that could maybe in fact expand our definition of a strike a little more is, you know, one of, I think, the, the realities that it's taken us a long time to catch up to in the 21st century, right, is, again, we're not the kind of consumers approaching a world that is waiting for us to discern, like, what, what services we want to buy, you know, what house we want to buy, what products we want to buy, yada, 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 right? More than anything, we are the product, right? You know, we are, we are this kind of bodies that are being sapped of labor and, and surplus value left and right, right? Whether that is the data that we are producing on our damn phones, right? You know, whether like all, there's so many ways that our just basic capacities for living life have been monetized and that we are in fact performing labor for a system that makes money off of us in ways that we still don't really see, right? We still don't see ourselves as the laborers in this kind of grossly technologized, financialized system. And so what does it mean to withhold, right, that surplus value? What does it mean to withhold that stuff, you know, that we are producing even outside of our workplace for the entities that are making money off of us? And right? I think that that's a very open-ended um, kind of question, but it's one that when you think about what makes a strike, um, can kind of help you understand, right, like how and in fact you are being, uh, your labor is being used uh, to produce certain results all across uh, the board. So how can you withhold that? How can you collectively withhold it uh, to the point where you actually affect the process of production itself? I think you, you start to answer those questions, maybe you'll get a closer definition of what a strike actually is. If you like this video from The Jacobin Show, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks. Thank you.